Okay, look, I'll just leave them as statics on the screen now. So <coughs> I think you can get the, the gist of what I'm trying to get across is that uh, modelling this crustal, the oceanic and uh, continental geological information, this mapping, uh, demonstrate that an expanding Earth is indeed viable. I came to a critical point in my research at this time. I could see that, uh, hey, all this information said that, yes, the Earth was expanding. So, but what happens to uh, the various data sets that are, are now readily available, the, the uh, uh, crustal geology which we've dealt with, the ancient magnetic poles, the location of the poles, the ancient geography, the ancient climate, and also will then allude to me mechanisms for expansion. When you plot this information on each of these, these uh, globes, if this information doesn't work, well, then I'm obviously wrong. Uh, as I found out, uh, what I was, would have liked to have shown here is the uh, development of Australia as an example of crustal geology. Australia, this is the location of Australia now. Moving back in time, Australia actually is actually located in the Northern Hemisphere and it's also rotated in a north-south uh, long axis. It's distinct from an east-west orientation at the moment. So the bulk of Australia is in the northern hemisphere. Perth is in high northern latitudes. The ancient equator uh, runs through, say, Adelaide to the Northern Territory. And um, uh, Queensland is just not, uh, tucked down into the southern hemisphere. Um, it, and, it, and that's where it stayed for 95% of Earth history. As we move forward in time, uh, with the opening up of the, the ancient uh, Pacific Ocean as well as the Indian Ocean, Australia then rotated and migrated south to the, its present location. Um, uh, geographically and climate-wise, uh, this is adequately uh, substantiated, especially in, in West Australia, where uh, we have extremely deeply weathered uh, rocks. We have uh, what's called laterites, which are a, 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 a valuable source of aluminium and iron, uh, which only occur in, in equatorial and tropical equatorial climates. Uh, similarly, we have overprinting that, we have uh, a period of desertification. Most of Western Australia uh, and Central Australia is now desert. So from that tropical environment, <coughs> we, we, as we move south, we then steadily move into a uh, desert environment, desert climate. Uh, Nita and I have just spent the past week travelling through the hinterland here to nearly 2,000 kilometres, seeing your, your wonderful states, and uh, through all these uh, national parks and whatnot, the common theme, these palm trees and ferns and these ancient uh, uh, plant species, wherever they come from, why are they there? These indicate to me that we had, that was a tropical climate, and that's precisely what this, this uh, modelling is showing, that Australia, as well as uh, those you've been to, to Alice Springs and, and say the Bungle Bungles, for instance, there's remnant palm trees in there which just should not be there. In plate tectonics, Australia is supposed to have originated from near southern South Pole and migrated north and is supposed to be still migrating north. So where are these palm trees come from? Here we have a situation where it's, it started in the northern hemisphere, it crosses the equator right at that moment of time when these so if species are evolving and, and becoming widespread and then migrating south into a progressively uh, more drier climate. So in these little niches, Alice Springs, Brisbane, uh, Bungle Bungles, these niches of remnant um, tropical species. Um, for those of you who have travelled in, in outback um, Western Australia, you also see pine trees and cypress pines, uh, which are just totally alien to Australian uh, uh, climate and, and vegetation.